with what is probably going to be the first full HD video of 2016, more so the first video for me in 2016, is something that I'm sure many people will probably be enthused to see. This recent purchase was made after I was left completely dissatisfied with the performance of a recently acquired 1979 vintage stereo receiver. It's AM and FM receiver, while analog really doesn't perform all that well both, again, on FM and AM, most notably on FM stereo stations. There's actually more than a fair amount of static hiss, multipath interference that makes its way into the audio. And to several people, it comes with the territory of listening to analog radio, but I happen to be of a type and kind that really dislikes having to hear hiss static interference and other anomalous peculiarities associated with analog FM listening. And so there have been great strides made back in the 1980s and even in the 1990s to do away with the inherent flaws associated once again with analog radio listening such as by the Carver Company and this company that manufactures this item, Denon. Now this could be one of two things, a stereo receiver or an AM-FM tuner. And the latter is most certainly what happens to be residing in this box presently. So I think it's high time I go ahead and open this stereo receiver up most carefully, not to uh, damage any of the, well, I was about to say internal components, but I really can't gain access to an internal components if it's just a tuner that's exposed. Okay, so we don't have much in the way of uh, service or owner's literature. Just a piece of paper with random pink dots present on it, the power cord, and the tuner. And here we are, again, the Denon TU-600 AM and FM stereo receiver from 19, the mid-1980s, complete with wood trim, which definitely adds a very nice refined touch, and it is polished or lacquered, so it's not just an, a bare wood finish or fiberboard. Same on this side, which has a very nice look to it. There's the box. I wonder where the tuner went. Here it is in pristine condition. I am really surprised at how well preserved this specimen is. There can't be too many tuners release of this model that are in this great of a condition. These wood sides definitely add a nice touch of refinement to an otherwise unassuming FM and AM stereo tuner. You have a power button here which is a an actual hard power button unlike the later stereo components manufactured by the Sony Corporation where this button merely performs as a soft power switch that puts the unit into a standby mode of operation. This kills power entirely to the unit so you don't have something of a parasitic device slowly sipping electricity even when you don't think it is. You have your customary up and down tuning buttons, AM and FM band selection buttons, as well as some presets here. Actually have a vast majority of tunable, savable presets all the way up to 20 and this is facilitated by the addition and presence of a coin cell located on the inside of this tuner which is probably safe to say dead by this point in time and will need replacing but for now it should be okay just as long as I leave this connected to AC power. Curiously not only are there FM and MW medium wave indicators present on this display but also an LW for long wave have some buttons here for saving the memory, auto mute and a mono button. So if you want to have it mute between tuning stations, you can. You can also enable mono mode for FM stereo stations if the reception is relatively poor and otherwise unlistenable, full of hiss and interference. This IF band present allows you to alternate between wide and narrow bandwidth settings, which will definitely prove to be useful for hard to listen to stations, a signal meter, stereo and auto indication lights, and again you can see more mention here of its FM AM random 20 channel preset with dynamic twin drive demodulator. This definitely caught me by surprise. The AM loop stick antenna is present on here. It's not only present but it's not broken off. I 
seems that not many people really went to the trouble of installing these back when they bought these tuners. And so pretty much every single one you find sold online doesn't have the loop stick antenna attached. But this one thankfully is attached. Well, attached in the sense that it's attached to the unit, but it's not attached to the tuner. Strictly speaking, because these spade connectors aren't connected to the AM screw terminals. 75 ohm F-type coaxial connector. Thankfully, it's the kind that's used in the United States and not in Europe. So it just takes a regular screw connection, the same one that your TV uses or your cable box. 300 ohm FM antenna connections if you don't want to use a 75 ohm connection and a ground and an AM terminal. Again, the AM loop stick antenna, which is quite nice to see present. Left and right stereo outputs. TU600 serial number and the power cord. Save for some markings on the top of the unit, presumably from some other piece of audio componentry. This really is an excellent example of a Denon TU600. It really is in excellent condition. Somebody really went to the trouble to take well, to take great care of this unit throughout its entire life from its original purchase in 1986 to its later being sold and uh, released them into my possession here in 2016. The presence of an F-type 75 ohm FM coaxial connector is most fortunate as I really despise having to use these matching transformers that can convert the 75 ohm output of one of these traditional TV antennas to the 300 ohm spade connectors that are required by most any stereo receiver prior to the 1980s and 1990s. For the moment of truth now, here we go. Thankfully this camera has a microphone jack that doubles as a line level input so I can give you a direct audio feed from the output of this tuner. I just have the RCA cables which then runs and terminates to a single three and a half millimeter stereo output. I can connect right up to this camera. The signal strength meter is working. It wasn't working at first. I was wondering why I wasn't receiving a signal. I, it was just showing this and that's because I needed to adjust this fine tuner knob here to adjust the tuning of the antenna. See it's set to wide bandwidth right now. It's not receiving a stereo signal for some reason which... Oh there we go. It was turned off the whole time. That helps. And now I think it would only be fair to directly connect you to this tuner's output and give you a taste of how it can perform both on FM and AM. It allowed for a 14-year initial copyright term. The copyright could be renewed 14 more years. Then the work fell into the public domain, which meant that you or I or anyone was free to reprint it, distribute it. The term was limited because Congress was trying to strike a balance, right? They said, okay, yes, it will be good for America to germinate a literary class here. Now, one thing I just noticed is that the... 89.9 WKCR FM signal is encro being encroached upon by some unauthorized use of 90.1 FM, which checking radiolocator.com and the FCC database does not reveal any license station that should be operating on there. Yet you can see how much stronger their signal is compared to 89.9, whose signal struggles to get through the uh, distortion and uh, bleed through, bleed over from 90.1. If I plug you in, you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. Yo. 
This station's idiocy never ceases to amaze me. I've been having to put up with their shenanigans for quite a long time now. I don't know when they started broadcasting, but uh, they're not licensed. They're distorting their audio. And their audio quality really isn't all that great. And they, are sh they shouldn't be broadcasting so close to an adjacent channel. 89.9 FM, and then there's 90.1 FM. Certainly not a good thing. <laughs> Seven songs in a row. No commercials. No commercials. On New York's new 92.3 Amp Radio. I need your love. Couch surf. Because, like, no one else really knew what they were for. It flew announced cancel. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. Zero. That was a rework of a. It's, it's Night Rhythms on 100.7 WHUD. One great song after another. Join in with your request or dedication by calling 1 877 274 WHUD, emailing WHUD.com, or texting into 87301. Here's Journey Separate Ways, Worlds Apart on WHUD. are just not buying it. The band playing as the Titanic sinks. Rachel Smoke can step back here. Of course, there is a powerful interest for an outgoing, not so long from now, president to say things are looking good. Morning in America. And of course, tax debt and safety. That is 1 800 290. thought she was talking. Or visit us at Valley National. Mm -hmm. for the English. Just like we just want to keep those ones. That's correct. Aquí Menezes mete el cerro.